today on Access TV. Live live with Gotham Comedy. Live. Get ready to laugh with Matt Kirshen, Ron Jossel, James Ponce, Michelle Buteau, and your host, Joe Coy. Gotham Comedy Live. All happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Coy. <laughs> this is this is live while this is happening, and uh, so there's people watching this shit. So it's we get to say whatever we want, and uh, and I'm happy about that. And if they can now, you can actually see how they they put the room together uh, for me because since I'm Asian, they have strategically placed the Asians. <laughs> Within, within eye shot, I see them. And I use eye because their eyes aren't open, but they are looking like. It's, they put them right, right in the fucking front. So it's all the Asians are performing tonight. I don't know why I have to squint my eyes to do an Asian character when I'm already fucking Asian. Like, these are my eyes right here, and then this is me doing an Asian character. It's so, it's so stupid. But if you don't know who I am, I'm half, I'm, I'm, my name is Joe Coy. I'm half white. I'm, I'm half white, half Asian, which means my dad was a, in a war. That's all that shit means. That's all that shit means. He, a lot of soldiers were fighting for this country. My dad was dating. I'm his purple heart. <laughs> my dad would say borderline racist shit to me when I was a kid growing up, but I knew he was joking, it's my dad. We are just sitting at the dinner table, and he's like, you know why I married your mom, right? And I'm like, well, why? Because I love Chinese food. <laughs> She's Filipino, dad. He's like, whatever. <laughs> rice is rice. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Yo, okay, this is what I love about being in New York, is only shit happens in New York and nowhere else. Uh, I, I'm not, this isn't even a joke, I just want to talk about what happened yesterday. I'm walking to my hotel room, and the, these two cops are talking, uh, I guess they're trying to arrest these two people, and, and, and they couldn't understand each other, so then he looked at me, the cop looked at me, <laughs> some racist shit, and he's like, hey, 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 you, you, speak, you speak French? <laughs> I swear to God, he goes, hey, you, you, speak, you speak French? There's a, there's a cop, and I'm like, uh, and then I, I go, uh, un poquito. Because you have to answer with a stupid answer. You know, right? If it's a stupid question, you answer with a stupid answer. Like, why? Who the fuck are you to think I'm French? That's fucked up. My eyes are like this. Like, are you French? Oh, yeah, I'm French. Yes, I'm French. Yes, I am. Are you, are you French? I said, un piquito. And then, and then I, and I walked off. I walked off, and, and then I swear to God, like, like maybe 10, 15 steps later, this is what I hear. That's Spanish, asshole! <laughs> I'm sorry, that's for me only, but that really happened yesterday. Uh, this one, okay, this one, all right. Let me just get this out, uh, out real quick. I know you guys hear this shit a lot. But when you come to New York, uh, you guys have every Latino possible. I'm from LA, and we have one, and it's just a Mexican. That's it. We, ha we have Mexicans. That's it. You come here. You have every other Latino ever made. You guys, you guys have Dominicans. You have Cubanos, Venezuelans, uh, Boricuas. 
Yeah, Puerto Rico. Out of all the, out of all the, I will say this: out of all the, out of all the Latinos, Puerto Ricans have the sexiest accents. <laughs> not, not the women. <laughs> Slow down. That, that wasn't a shout out. Slow down. That, that was. <laughs> Puerto Rican women, you're you're a fly as shit. You, you got the body, the ass, everything, the look, but your your accent is a little aggressive. It's like very Rosie Perez. It's very, it's very in your face. Like you can't handle this pussy, this pussy, this pussy. It's Puerto Rican pussy. You can't handle this pussy. Like, it's, yo, did you call that pussy? Like that's too aggressive. Por Puerto Rican men, Puerto Rican men have the sexiest accents. And I'm not, I'm not gay. But I'm just saying, when, when Puerto Rican men talk, it'll make you gay for a second. <laughs> like for one second, it'll make you gay. I have, a, I have a Puerto Rican doorman at my hotel. I went to Starbucks twice. Both times I asked him if he wanted anything just to hear him talk. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm like, yo, I'm going to Starbucks. You want anything? He's like, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, I already have a, I already have a special today. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get you another one, motherfucker. That is too sexy. You say a espresso, that is sexy shit. <laughs> I... <laughs> I almost, I almost died flying, uh, by the way. I want everyone to know that if this has never happened to you, listen to this story, it's some scary shit. The engine on the plane exploded and the pilot had to do an emergency landing, but before they could land the plane, the, the pilot had to fly around for like an hour and a half to dump all the gas out to make the plane lighter. And then when he let all the gas out, that's when he, he, he landed the plane back in LAX. And then when he landed the plane back in LAX, that's when I woke up. Cause I was asleep during, I was asleep during all this shit. I had no idea that my life was in danger <laughs> until I woke up to everyone on the plane cheering like, yay, pilot, pilot, yay, pilot. <laughs> and I woke up and I, was, and, I, and I looked at the chick next to me and I go, hey, why is everyone, why is everyone cheering? Why, why is everyone cheering for the pilot? What's going on? And then she was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> The engine on the plane exploded. So the pilot had to do an emergency landing. But before he could land the plane, he had to like dump all the gas out of the plane. And he did that for like an hour and a half. And then when he dumped all the gas out, he finally landed the plane in LAX. <laughs> We're still in LAX. <laughs> And I was like, and you didn't fucking wake me up? That's fucked up. You're, you're sitting right next to me. The plane's about to crash. Why did you wake me up? I'm sitting here sleeping. I'm going to die in my sleep. That's fucked up. Wake me up so I can squeeze some titties on the way down. Because that's how I'm dying. If we're dying on the plane, I'm squeezing every titty on that fucking plane. I don't give a shit. I'm like, hey, come here, come here. We're about to die anyways. Come here, come here. I know why they didn't wake me up on the plane, because I suffer from this thing called sleep apnea. And if you don't know what sleep apnea is, it's snoring only worse. I choke in my sleep and I'm loud as shit. So I was annoying everybody on that plane. So when, when they were doing the emergency landing and the flight attendant was like, you know what, should we wake him up? And everyone on the plane was like, you know what, fuck him. <laughs> He's gonna keep us up anyways. Cause this is what I look like when I sleep. It's the most disgusting thing you'll ever see. This is what I look like. Ha! Ha! It's disgusting. <laughs> I'm, this is true, that's how people sleep with sleep apnea, it's horrible. In order for me to sleep, I have to use a CPAP machine. A CPAP machine and I wear a full mask on my face. This mask goes on my face like this and two straps go behind my head. It looks like I have a jock strap on my face. 
But when I wear it, I sleep like an air. A hose comes out, a hose comes out of the mask, goes into the machine, I press power, and then and it blows air down my throat. And when I wear it, I sleep like an angel. I swear, it's beautiful. I just wear it like this, and it's like. <laughs> Every now and then I'll knock the mask off. <laughs> so, I don't tell any girl that I'm dating about this mask. I don't tell her about this machine. I don't tell any girl about this shit until after we do it for the first time. Because if I tell her before, it's a deal breaker. No one's gonna fuck a guy with a mask on his face. I tell her after, and I do it real creepy, too. I'm like, sweet dreams. I know I will. Are you guys having fun? This is a great show. Gotham Comedy Live. We'll be right back. We got more comics. It's going to crush. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Matt Kirshen is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. You guys ready for more comedy? You've seen this next act on Jimmy Fallon. Give it up for Matt Kirshen. Hi, uh, you're right, New York. How you doing? You good? Oh, look at you, you lovely Americans, all happy and smiley and polite. <laughs> no one's ever told you that before, have they? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one has ever told you in the history of you being alive as Americans that you're polite people. Not, especially not in New York. Like, you have no idea. You think Brits are the polite ones, and we are not. <laughs> we are mean-spirited, arrogant people. But we sound delightful. Love this country. I live out here now. It's amazing. You're ridiculous people. You got cowboys. <laughs> Still. <laughs> no one's told them. <laughs> no one's taken them aside and gone, listen, guys, we got tractors now. <laughs> you really don't need to still do that. <laughs> Still doing the same job that they did in the 19th century, wearing all the same stuff. Like, do you know how different the world was back then? Back in the 19th century, back then, marrying a gold digger was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's changed, but cowboys are the same. And they're respected, they're revered. They're this sort of mythological creature in America. Only you guys could do that. Only Americans could romanticize farmers. Because you know that's what cowboys are, right? You know they're farmers. Right? They're the guys who look after the cows. The clue's in the name. <laughs> the job of a cowboy is to stop a cow. The wiliest of all creatures. <laughs> from escaping from a field the size of my country. I can't even mock you either, because you got cowboys, we've got royalty. <laughs> I mean, that's humiliating. Cowboys are 19th century royals, what, first? <laughs> like, minus numbers? I don't even know. They, like, they live in castles. Like castles. In 2013, that's 12 years after a space odyssey. We should be living on the moon by now, and instead we've got this family that lives in a castle. I don't think you get in America, I don't think you properly get how embarrassing, how ridiculous that is, because in America, the royals are just this celebrity family. You know, they're on the TV shows and the glossy magazines, but it's our head of state. <laughs> like, where you've got the president, we have that. <laughs> like, imagine if you had to bow to the Kardashians. Right? 
And not even the current Kardashians, not the ones you know now, not, not Kim and Courtney and everyone. Imagine if Kardashians only mated with other Kardashians <laughs> for like hundreds of years. And after centuries of Kardashian inbreeding, whatever crawled out of the final Kardashian was on your money. And yet I, I'm torn, I'm torn as a person, I'm torn politically because I think it's ridiculous that we've got a royal family, I think it's ridiculous that someone could be born into that position, not elected, just born into that post just because of who their parents were. But at the same time, I think it's essential. I think it's essential that we have it and I think you're missing out by not having it. Because when you're kids, you're told you could be president, told anyone could be president, you could be president one day if you put your mind to it. Now it's bullshit, you never will. <laughs> None of you will ever be president. <laughs> but you grow up believing it, like, I could be president, I could have that. Whereas in Britain, from a kid, you're like, you will never be king. <laughs> or queen. It'll, it'll never happen. You will never have that position. And that makes us angry, and that makes us frustrated, and that's why we have healthcare. Did you, know, did you know wherever the queen goes, she has her own toilet <laughs> that she and only she is allowed to use? You know that? That's true. Like, you can look it up. Like, it's a little perk of the job. If you do become queen one day, that's what you get. So <laughs> stay in school, kids. <laughs> but that's what she gets. Everywhere she goes on a royal visit, there's this one toilet that only she is allowed to touch, which seems like a bonus, seems like a perk. But if she destroys it... <laughs> She can't blame anyone else, you know? <laughs> I... The rest of us, like us normal people, we get to go, I don't know who was in there before me, but... I mean, I just held my breath. I recommend you do the same. <laughs> the Queen doesn't have that luxury. I, I think she spends more time than you'd reckon cleaning toilets. <laughs> just covering her tracks, you know? No. Next time you see the queen on the news waving, just imagine a glove and a brush. That... <laughs> That's her burden. It's the toilet of Damocles. <laughs> it's nice being back out on the East Coast as well. I live out West normally. Last time... Okay, here's a story I can't do on normal TV shows. Uh, <laughs> this one's live. What the fuck are they going to do? So... Uh... <laughs> Here's what happened last time I was out on this side of the country. I spent a week in New York, and then I went to Boston, and I was in Boston about two days after a fairly big, fairly terrible event happened in Boston. I don't know if you remember it. It was a lot of the news for a while. Bombs, death, horrible stuff. Two days catching the people, then I arrive, just walking through that city, just trying to not look foreign. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got a face that passes for a lot of different nationalities. I don't... I was being the most English I've ever been in my life. <laughs> I know English is a type of foreign, but apparently it's one of the okay ones. <laughs> Just walking through Boston, like, hello, how are you? <laughs> what a marvelous day it is in Boston. <laughs> New England, I'm from the old one, good times. <laughs> that's, that's how we walk. Chechens, who saw that coming? Chechens. You know what they say about Chechens? No, nor do I. No one knows anything about Chechens. No one knows a damn thing about Chechens. This is the only thing. I'm ignorant about world affairs, maybe. This is the only thing I know about Chechens. That thing, and that they used to be on the news followed by the word rebels. <laughs> That's all I know about Chechens. All I know about Chechens is if they're on the news, it's never a fun story. It's never like, and finally in Chechnya, a cat's learnt to skateboard. <laughs> Always misery and death. Like, poor Chechens. That story came out, they must have been like, oh, this as well, Jesus. <laughs> More misery on our country. They must have felt like I felt as a Jew when they caught Bernie Madoff. <laughs> uh, 
biggest financial scam in history. Who's it gonna be? Is it a six foot Aryan? <laughs> oh no, it's Shylock the gnome. But at least we know they're Chechens, because all we previously knew, all we previously knew is, is that they're cowards. That's what they said. That's what they kept saying on the news. That's what they said in the, the commentary. That's what the president said. Obama, that day, the day it happened, he stood on the news. He said, these people are cowards. And they're not. They're assholes. <laughs> they're pricks. They're shits. They're reprehensible scum. But that's not cowardice. Get it right. Call them what they are. If Obama was being truly honest, he should have stood there on the news that day in front of the White House with a podium and the eagle and the flag and just gone, listen, we don't know who did this yet. But what we do know for sure is that they're cunts. <laughs> because whenever anything like that's happened in the past, that's who it's turned out to be. And, uh, we got a top FBI profile in on this as well. He's like, yeah, this is the work of one or more cunts. We don't know how many, yeah, but... <laughs> This is one of the cuntiest acts we've seen in quite some time. <laughs> That's why I can't do this joke on TV. But, uh, <laughs> but they're not cowards, right? The coward's the person who thinks about planting a bomb and then goes, eh, I might get caught, right? That's a coward. <laughs> we need more cowards is what I'm saying. The world would be a better place if we had more cowards. Like, I've never murdered anyone. I'm not brave. <laughs> I'm not a brave person. I'm not, like, on more than one occasion. I've been on the top of a diving board and taken the stairs back down. <laughs> Which, by the way, that is a lonely journey. If you've ever done that, there's no way to play that one over. Oh, I just left my diving gloves on the bottom. I'll just go back down and get my diving gloves and I'll be back up again. <laughs> Listen, people, thank you so much for listening to me. I'm Matt Kirshen. Take care of yourselves. See you later. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Juan Jossel is taking the stage when we return. All right, everybody, put your hands together. You've seen him on Showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Jossel. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I, I hate saying hi to people now because there's too many versions of handshakes and you have to guess which one's coming. <laughs> Normal fist bump, hey, what's up? Normal handshake, hey, how you doing? Sometimes you don't know what's coming up, right? Then you end up doing this, you're like, what the hell? <laughs> Why is your hand so soft? <laughs> you ever say goodbye to somebody and then both of you have to leave and then walk in the same direction? <laughs> so take care. <laughs> we can't talk, we said goodbye. I was still talking to my ex-girlfriend, just to piss me off on her first date with this new guy, she brought him to one of my shows. Aww. Isn't that mean? Can't do that, that's my job. I wouldn't do that to her. I wouldn't go meet her girl, then bring her nowhere and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get over exes today because of social media. You know, it's too tempting, you wanna stalk them. That's why we like Facebook. It saves us gas money from driving by their house every day. <laughs> but make sure when you search for somebody on Facebook, you put their name in the search box <laughs> and not the status update box. <laughs> for that split second, everybody knows who the hell you're creeping. <laughs> it was easy to get over X's back in the day. All you needed was a slow jam mixtape. And we had to work hard to get all that music in there because we didn't have downloading back in the day. Back in the day, downloading was taking two separate tape players, having facing together. Pace, press play on one, press record on the other one. Make sure nobody else made a damn noise. But that would mess up your ride home on that first date. It's my favorite song from Boys to Men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Ronald, what are all these tapes doing in the bathroom? <laughs> Who's that? That was my dad. That was a Filipino remix. <laughs> if your CD skips today, just burn a new one. Back in the day, when your tape skipped, you could hear it skip like. <laughs> then you take it out and you see it all unraveled. 
So what the hell do we do? The one guy in the back of the car is like, don't worry, I've got a pencil. <laughs> Some young guys don't get that joke. <laughs> the hell's a pencil? <laughs> I was talking to this 20-year-old the other day, he's telling me this, you know, back in the day. Like, what? <laughs> Can't say back in the day if you're under the age of 30. You know why? Because you're still living in your fucking day. <laughs> like back in the day, Facebook was so hard to use. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Back in the day, I took a course in college called the internet. <laughs> which I failed. Because <laughs> I forgot to bring my telephone cord to my fucking exam. Remember dial-up? What the hell were we thinking? <laughs> On the computer, someone picks up the phone. Hang up the phone, John, download porn. <laughs> it's gonna take me six hours. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm horny. <laughs> That's what you have to do when you're a guy. You have to wait till you're horny. You have to plan your horniness. You have to press download, then go to work for eight hours. <laughs> Come back and it's all ready for you. <laughs> it's like you made crock pot porno. <laughs> This kid's watching porno on his cell phone. I'm like, damn, man, that's so easy. Back in the day, we had to go to the video store and the back of the video store where the saloon doors were. <laughs> had to dress up as somebody else. Walk in and see my dad, holy shit. He's wearing my jacket, I'm wearing his. I feel sorry for the kids in the late 1800s, because that was when porno films were created. The late 1800s, they had to wait till their parents went to sleep, set up a projector machine, <laughs> use a wooden crank handle, like <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and they had to read that shit, because it was silent films, right? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Squirt. <laughs> Do you realize we live in a day and age where everybody has a cell phone to the point where you see somebody in a regular pay phone, you think, man, that guy's some serious fucking trouble. <laughs> Just wanna roll up next to them, are you okay? <laughs> Who robbed you? <laughs> it's either some serious trouble or they're creating trouble. 20 years ago, if you had a cell phone, people thought you were a drug dealer. It's like, oh my God, that guy's a cell phone. He must be a drug dealer. And it's a Motorola flip phone too, he's a serious drug dealer. <laughs> Now we see someone in a pay phone, you're like, fuck, that guy's a drug dealer. <laughs> we love our phones so much that you forget your phone at home, you actually feel physically naked without it. And I think to myself, I'd rather be naked and have my phone. <laughs> At least I can call my friends and bring me pants. <laughs> the worst is you leave your house with your phone, but you forget your charger. You like one green bar of crack left. As soon as that's gone, you turn homeless instantly, like, ah! Start talking to strangers, you got a charger. You got a charger. <laughs> my birthday passed last week, my dad gave me a nose hair trimmer. That's not a gift, that's a fucking insult. I shaved it to the skin, you can't do that. You need your hairs to save you from the outside allergens. When you shave it, you get super smell, I swear to God. What time is it? 4.32. <laughs> Christmas is my favorite holiday, but I never really believed in Santa Claus growing up because I was raised in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting by the heater, when the fuck is he to come out? <laughs> I was like, this fat ass with these coils. People leave milk and cookies. I'm Filipino, left guava juice and shrimps. <laughs> I can't believe in Santa Claus when you're Filipino because your dad's supposed to dress up as Santa. My Santa was fucking brown. <laughs> so why is Santa wearing my dad's green track pants? And my jacket again? <laughs> I would've wanted there to be an Asian Santa. Come on, all the gifts are bootlegs, you know? <laughs> Here's a DVD, no title, just press play. <laughs> I'm happy that Santa Claus is white though. That's a good call. Santa Claus should be white, because there's any other race coming down your chimney at two o'clock in the fucking morning. <laughs> Call the police. <laughs> certain things in life should only be white. I know there's ethnic people that want to be represented in television too, but certain things in life should only be white. Like the TV show Cash Cab could only be played by a fucking white guy. 
any other race would scare you. <laughs> hey, Vato, lock the doors and ask you a couple questions. <laughs> and Filipinos not even Asian, we're half Asian and half Spanish. My parents came to the country of Canada, that's where I'm from, right? They have to, they have to decide what race they were, so they have to put it on a form. They have to check mark white, black, Latino, Asian, or Middle Eastern. They would check mark Asian and Latino, have two lines drawn on one, and write Filipino. <laughs> We were half Asian and half Spanish. See, what happened was, back in the day, Spain went to the Philippines, fucked everybody, and then left. It's like, where's your dad? On those boats. Where are they going? To the Caribbean. Why? To make Cubans. And my parents taught me English, which is so weird, because they had Filipino accents, so I grew up with an accent. You know what messed up that is? I had a Filipino accent. I wasn't born in the Philippines. I didn't know how to speak Filipino. I just had a fucking accent. How stupid is that? Teacher's like, where are you from? Canada. <laughs> are you sure? Pasate. <laughs> you can't speak any Filipino. Not at all. <laughs> These kids are North Korean spy for sure. <laughs> the only kids that understood me were the rich white kids for some reason. <laughs> Why do you understand me? Because my nanny was Filipino to. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. James Ponce is taking the stage when we return. This next guy opens for me all across the country. Please put your hands together for James Ponce. <laughs> What's up? All right. Uh, just to let you guys know, uh, I have to tell you this for my own safety. Uh, I'm Mexican. Uh, and I, I'm only saying this because if I tell you later and you find out by me telling you later, sometimes people get mad. You know what I mean? Like we're hanging out. Hey, man, you're a real cool guy. All thinks I'm Mexican. Fucking trusted you, bro. Really? Like, uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's true. Both my parents, uh, both Mexican, and they were migrant workers. And they met in Texas. They were 17 years old, and they met picking strawberries. And they've been married for 48 years since. I don't know. No, don't clap. Don't clap. Oh my God. Who claps? You know who claps for that? People that have not been married 48 years. That's who fucking claps for that. My mom is trying to kill my dad as we speak. Are you kidding me? She's like a little Mexican wily coyote right now, setting traps and shit for him. It's horrible. <laughs> It doesn't matter, because he's been dying since I was 10 anyway. Uh, he's diabetic. No, don't. Uh, come on. No, he's, he's diabetic. He fucking hams it up so bad. Oh, I've been dying. I was 10, and he sat me down. Is this a Latino thing? I don't know if this is just like, I think it's a very, I don't know if this is a very, just a Mexican or just Latino across the board. But he sat me down. I was 10, and he was doing that macho. I'm not going to cry, but I'm crying at the same time. I'm shaking, and I'm not going to hold it together for you, for the family. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die pretty soon, and I'm crying. Dad, don't die. No, it's gonna happen. You're kidding. 10 years old, and then 15. Me, I'm not gonna be here forever. You gotta take 20. I'm not gonna, 25. I'm not gonna, 34. I still go home. You know, I'm not gonna be here forever. Are you? Now my mom just says, well, quit promising us. <laughs> this is like the best thing ever. That. <laughs> That's the love I want. <laughs> you know what I mean? When someone tells you, I hope you die, like, yeah, I hope I die too. <laughs> I can't, you know, and I'm, here's the thing, I'm scared. I've never been married. I'm talking shit. I don't have kids. But it's just, I see girls nowadays, and you girls are fighting for your independence. You've been fighting since, like, the 50s and 60s, but guess what? You've, you've, you've won a long time ago. With guys, we've given up. You have a vagina, you fucking win. We don't <laughs> care. Congratulations. You know more Alicia Keys sings songs for us, man. You go, you know what I mean? Like the vagina was given to the right person. You guys take excellent care of it. Like you've seen what we do it, do to it. We have no idea how to handle that. And we're like, oh shit comes out too? Oh my god. <laughs> like if guys had a vagina for one day, we would have no no clue. Just one day in our life, just boop, there it is. We'd have no you know what I mean? Like, bro, I would call you, come over, man. I got my vagina today. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bring shit to put in. You come with a wagon. All right, man. Check it out. We got wagon on. <laughs> like if, all right. Like if girls had a like a penis for one day, you guys, you guys would do cute shit with it. You wouldn't know. 
You know what I mean? Look, I put rabbit ears on it. It looks like a little mouth. <laughs> it's coming out. It's got one eyelash. It looks like it's winking, right? Look at that. <laughs> boring. So boring. And it's not your fault because it's our fault. Because when we show it to you the first time, we make it seem like it's the most amazing. You know what I mean? Like, ta-da, the best thing you've ever seen in your life. Like, it's the... When you're not around, we're horrible to it. Like, it's the worst. We're so, right? You're, you're agreed. You're like, you know behind you. <laughs> you're like, you're, you're nodding your head. Like, we beat the shit out of it. And it's true. <laughs> right, bro? Like, we're so... It's like a little, like, just pops up at you, like, front end. Like, what the fuck, motherfucker? Like, you're gonna... Like, our penis just should be on a commercial and Sarah McLaughlin's in the background. I will remember you. <laughs> and it just shows a bunch of shaking, shivering, cold penises. Oh, yeah. Please, every day, a penis is brutally beaten. I'm not saying you girls wouldn't, you would do fun stuff with it, okay, there. But I'm just saying you're emotional people. It would be different. Like, you would, you would right away, you would Instagram that. I know you would. <laughs> You would totally, look, check it out. Yeah, and he would still do this for no reason. This pose would still, every girl, I, every girl has this pose. I'm not even, yes? You do, yes, you did it for me. And you even, you, oh, you twisted it too. I know what that is too, and I don't, I know, I know what it is. And see, so and here's a good example. When I'm talking about independence, like young women, you, you're amazing, you look beautiful, right? But you still somehow, like, I'm gonna take a picture. All right, okay, all right, it's gonna be awesome. Um, well, for, okay, first I'm gonna do this because all right, what happens is it make my arm look slender. That's right. And so what happens is I get the fat right here and I push it down. I fucking just push it down. See right here and it collects. And guess what? It's all right here. So I just go boop. All right. It's just a little bit. And it goes all the way down to my calves. Guess what? Bye, fat. See you later. <laughs> look like a supermodel. Take the picture, Cynthia. I can't, I can't hold it. <laughs> Click. Oh, <laughs> just like that. Every girl thinks that, and guess what? We're not, no guy is going on Facebook zooming in on your arms, by the way. No dude is like, dude, check out those delts, <laughs> those triceps. Chick works out. We're looking at your boobs, okay? My point is independence isn't like what you're owning, what you're doing, like you're fighting against yourselves. We don't care. You want real independence? Look at cougars. Cougars are like, that's the new independent woman, man. If you're young, meet a cougar. Yeah, <laughs> I heard one just growl right now. That was cool. <laughs> and you just purred. Like, if you hook up with a cougar, it's the best, man. Because when they take you home, they use their teeth and they pick you up by the back of the neck like that. Holy shit. Where are we going? Oh, cool. Your house? Cool. Where are we going? Oh, your kids play soccer? Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you get a juice box when you're done. Thanks, lady. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we get, I don't know. I don't know if this is a bad thing to say. I just think in the US, we get married so young. Like, how do we fall into that, you know what I mean? That same rhythmic fucking, I think number one, we get married too young. And number two, weed is not bad. Now hear me out, I don't even smoke, I don't even smoke weed, right? <laughs> I don't even smoke weed, right? But I just think it's ridiculous, it's still legal. I think it's legal because we can't monitor the after effects yet. You know what I mean? Like we're all drinking alcohol right now, right? But check it out, at .08, you're all legally drunk no matter how you're acting, right? But with weed, there's no highness level yet. You know what I mean? There's no like barometer or a weed. There's no like the cops can't call in a. Uh, I got a cold Taco Bell in front of a uh, Gotham. I got a cold Taco Bell. <laughs> it's just a guy minding his own business, having fun. Let's take him in. Like, fuck. If we're that scared of people being high in society, we could be smart about it. You know what I mean? Like when the cops pull you over, instead of interrogating you, they just tell you a knock knock joke or something, you know? <laughs> they pull you over, sir. Sir, uh, knock knock. Did you, did you say knock knock or are you knock knocking? I don't know which one you are. Did you say Did you say it or did you do it? You know what I mean? I don't know which one it was. You know like when you read a comic book and it says pow, but it's not really fucking pow. I don't know which one. Help me out, bro. Help me out. No one's even in the car. He's asking for help. <laughs> We can't be dumb about this stuff in America, you know what I mean? Like, the thing is, I don't smoke weed, but I'm an advocate. I drink, that's my guilty pleasure, fucking drinking. Like, have you ever gotten so drunk, you have to apologize to someone the next day? But wait, wait a minute, but through a text message? That's the worst. I'm so sorry. 
I try to make out with you. <laughs> Bro. No, not again. Hey, hey, guys, you guys have been awesome, man. My name is James Bonte. Thanks for hanging out. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Michelle Buteau is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Our next comic has a new show on Fox, Enlisted. Please put your hands together for Michelle Buteau. What's up, everybody? How y'all motherfucking doing? You guys are cute as fuck. You guys look young. You still got the look of hope in your face. I like that shit. I want to breastfeed this section right here. <laughs> Not in a nasty way. No, 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 stop clapping. That's gross. Um, I got some good news. I just got married. What? <laughs> to the green woman. Thank you, bitches. Thank you, bitches. It crazy, it crazy. And when I first got married, all my friends were like, let me see your ring. Where's that diamond? Let me see that blend. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I have a very simple wedding band, okay? Because I am anti-diamond. I saw this crazy documentary about these kids in Africa. Just kidding, he's broke. <laughs> so. White gold is forever. <laughs> nah, I really love my man, though. He makes me, he makes me feel like a Kardashian. He does, just special for no reason. <laughs> just say it, just say it. Just say it. And I have not seen a, a picture of her baby yet, Kim's baby. I want to see a picture of her baby. Because apparently the baby looks just like her. I'm like, damn, how does a newborn look like a dumbass hoe already? <laughs> yeah, I said that shit. And what? She ain't watching. <laughs> My man's super cute, though. He's white. I like him anyways. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I could take him places. He wears shoes. <laughs> he's European, so he's like vintage white. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That old Jeep. Yeah, he's from Holland, because if it ain't Dutch, it ain't much. What? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what he says. No, I love it. I love him. I call his face Ikea because I use it as a chill. <laughs> it's love, y'all. It's love. Trust, bitch. <laughs> and everybody wants to know the story, too, when you meet someone. They're like, damn, how'd y'all meet? How'd you make that happen? Let me tell you something. I lost six pounds, and I want someone to see me naked. That was it. I sat on his dick and fell in love. <laughs> Hello, if you clapping, you a hoe. Listen. <laughs> if you are single, this is my advice to you. Hoe it the fuck up. <laughs> it's a numbers game, okay? You ain't playing a lot of once, what the fuck? I love him. And I love interracial, too. Like, I never felt like I was dating a white guy ever, real talk, until I had to go to the beach with his family. I was like, oh, that's how we differ. <laughs> white European people go to the beach. Let me tell y'all something. They go prepared, OK? They had sandwiches, organic teas, <laughs> cigarettes, cheeses, lotions, furniture, tents for little white babies. What the fuck? Did you know they made tents for little white babies? I had no idea. That baby in a tent screaming, wah, wah. I was like, your baby gonna be okay. People are looking at me on the beach like I'm the Jamaican nanny. I'm like, no, bitch. No, boo-boo. I pay my taxes in other ways, okay? 
Shit, this ain't the help. I'm not like you was kind, you was important, <laughs> you was special. Oh. No. Hashtag no thank you. <laughs> but white European people go on the beach, they go so prepared. Like my people are Caribbean, all right? We go to the beach with rum and condoms, that is it. <laughs> Maybe condoms, I don't even know. There's a lot of us, we don't look alike. For real, and I love his family, but like Holland is such an old country, they don't even know they're sounding racist half the time. Like every night when me and my man go to bed, he's like, are you ready to go to the master's bedroom? I'm like, what the fuck you just said? <laughs> Are you trying to unchain my Django right now? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> he don't know, he don't know. I was at my father-in-law's house in Holland. He's like, I got some dessert after dinner. I was like, boom, you know, I love me some dessert. <laughs> he busted out these little marshmallows with a graham cracker covered in milk chocolate. He's like, yo, try these. These are called Negazunins. I was like, what the fuck you just said? <laughs> Real talk. He's like, it translates to Negro kisses. They're delicious. I was like, hold up, father-in-law. <laughs> yes, you are right. They are delicious. But hear what? Um, when you come visit us in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, call that shit s'mores. <laughs> Trust. Trust. Hello. Titties shaking, shaking them titties. Crazy, it's real crazy. And I love his accent, he can make anything sound sexy. I come home from work, he's like, baby, do you want a sandwich? I was like, shit, I ain't even hungry, but I'll take that sandwich. He's like, you want fresh herbs and mayonnaise? I was like, fuck, I feel like a lady. Taking my panties off. But now, four years later, I'm like, motherfucker, can you conjugate some, please? I don't know what the fuck you trying to say right now. I need subtitles for his ass. He's like, I is. I'm like, I is. That is not proper English, okay? <laughs> this is not Medea Go Dutch, okay, Rosetta Stone? <laughs> I feel bad for him, though. He doesn't speak a lot of English, but that's how I like to keep it simple. <laughs> He's spending so much time with me in America, his English is starting to sound like mine. He picked up the phone the other day. He was like, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> What? <laughs> I married a white European guy that sounds like a gay black man. Hey! Been touched by an angel. <laughs> and it's crazy when we go to Holland together because everyone thinks I'm Moroccan. I'm like, shit, I've never been to Morocco, but those bitches look like me. They must be beautiful. <laughs> I don't think I look Moroccan at all because I'm allowed to read and I still have my clit. <laughs> yeah, I got real. <laughs> got Anderson Cooper real, but... <laughs> I never lived with a boy before, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still trying to figure out the ways. Like, I, have, I don't fart around him at all. I don't even take a poo-poo properly. Like, I'm <laughs> shitting like a ninja, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I turn the TV on for noise. He's like, what you watching? I'm like, mind your business. <laughs> I'm burning incense and candles. My friends are like, ooh, girl, you reading palms? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm spiritual. <laughs> I turn the shower on for extra noise, but my shower has one temperature, hot as fuck. It is an ethnic heat when I'm trying to take a poo-poo. I'm like doing Pilates with my ass. I'm like, damn, what is going on? Am I even taking a shit? It is so hot when I'm trying to take a poo-poo. I'm having flashbacks from war I never been in, okay? <laughs> And my man's like, boo, why are you so uptight? Why are you so uptight? I'm like, motherfucker, I haven't farted in four years! <laughs> you guys have been delicious and nutritious. Wear condoms and enjoy yourself. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City.
Nice. We're back. Was that fun? Did you guys have fun? <laughs> what was that? What, what kind of cheer was that? She was like, what are you? What's your ethnicity? What are you? Oh, you're Filipino. Okay, I'm Filipino. All right, cool. Oh, thank you. Let's not eliminate everybody else. <laughs> Filipinos. Does your mom point with her lips? Yeah, that's, that's a Filipino thing. It's the most annoying thing. When I was a kid, and we're, we'll be at the mall, and, and my mom would go, Joseph, come here. I'm like, where? She's like, right there, right there. <laughs> the fuck are you pointing at, mom? Does your mom pick up stuff with her feet? Yeah? That's that, my mom too. Clean up my room. Joseph, why is your underwear <laughs> all over the fucking room? Put it over there. Are you guys all Filipino? Oh, you're all Filipino? Oh, man. So somewhere in New York, there's an empty hospital. <laughs> no fucking nurses working tonight. Did you guys have fun? Let's, re let's bring up all the comics, you guys. Matt Kirshen, Don Jostle, James Ponte, and of course, the beautiful Michelle Foucault.